very often we need to test things. And for this there are conditionals. And this works as follows. So say for example we have a variable a. And we assign this variable a certain value, say 4. So we, if we comment this a little bit, then we can say assign a value to value to variable a. And then we run it, and of course, then a would have the value 1, uh, 4, of course, not 1, uh, the value 4. And then we can test this condition. So now we want to test whether a is in fact 4. And for this I'm not using an equal sign, but a double equal sign. A double equal sign makes a test and tests a, a certain condition. So say we want to test whether a equals f um, 2. And I run it. And of course this is false. And this is also the result here. So this is an, a false result. So this would be testing a condition. And we can test whether a equals 4 and then of course we'll get true. And we can even do a little bit more. We can test whether a is smaller than 4, which is false. We can test whether it's smaller or equal than 4, which of course is then again true. And the same for larger, which is false, or larger and equal for which is then again true. So these are simple tests for conditions uh, with this double equal sign. This is also possible with strings. So assume we have b and we assign p the name hello and then we test it. Test whether b equals and then I put in here say hello and you can think about whether this would work or not it's not working because hello is not defined because hello here is not a string it's a variable so python expects that hello has a value but it doesn't have a value we never defined hello um, so it would only work if you would define hello for example if it hello equals four now hello has the value four and of course if i run this it's wrong because um, b is not four but it's not what we wanted. We want to test whether it's a string. So this also needs to be a string then. And now if we run it, we don't get an error message, but we get a true. Because of course, B is hello. So if you test B, but it's hello, then this is the case. And we could also test whether it's spelled correctly. So if I have just one L, of course, this is then false. So this is also possible to test strings here. Now let's make a, an example. So say we want to test whether um, something is an olivine. So we have a we have an analysis of MGO. Say this is uh, 45. This is then in weight percent. An analysis in weight percent, and we want to test whether it's an olivine. And then the result, if it's an olivine, so if or if it's larger than 54 percent, it would be an olivine. If it's smaller than 54 weight percent, it would not be an olivine. And this we can test with a conditional. So if MGO is larger than 54 weight percent, we want to say it's an olivine. So we have an indent here, print, print, um, olivine. Very simple, olivine. If it's not an olivine, so else, we don't need a condition here, else, print uh, not an olivine not an olivine we could have a, also a condition here but we don't need it so you could also say else mgo smaller than whatever and uh, this this would also work but we only want to test if it's large than 54 olivine else not an olivine we run it and it's not an olivine because it is exactly 54, but I'm larger than 54, so it's not an olivine. So if I put in here 50, 56, then we get it's an olivine. So by this we can have a very simple test. So that's quite neat. Now let's say we also want to test whether this is a 
pyroxene. So if it is, say, not else, so after this test here, if MgO is larger 54 olivine, else if MgO is, uh, say, smaller, equal, smaller or equal to 54, then print pyroxene. So this is what you would like to have, and this is how it works, only that this is not called else if, but in short only elif. So just a concatenation of, um, a contraption of else and if. Print pyroxene, else not an olivine, although this doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, something different maybe, something different, different. So, and I run it, and now again it's an olivine, uh, there's a spelling error. So if it's um, 44, it now says it's a pyroxene. And also, well, there's no pyroxene with 5% um, MGO, or, well, there is, but, but say we're only looking at specific pyroxenes, so you want to have an additional condition, and MGO is larger than, say, 10. MGO is larger than 10. And we run it again, something different. Um, because in this case, we need to put this in round brackets, otherwise this is not working here. You can't read it correctly, and now it works. So now MGO small than 54 and larger than 10, it's a pyroxene. And if it's now 5 here, then it's something different. And a final example, we can also do it with, a, um, with strings. So for example, we have a plot and the scaling of the plot um, is either linear or log. So if the scale of the plot of the, uh, of the plot equals linear, then print, um, it's a linear scale, else, check out the columns and the indents, else print, it's a log scale, log scaling and linear scaling. And of course, then I need to define scale. This might be for example, linear, I run it, and then we have a linear scaling, and if this is something different, log for example, it will print out it's a log scaling. So by this we can test for the string. So this is quite convenient, and this is something we need all the time, these kind of conditionals here.